Well, we've made it all the way to the final entry in the Max Payne series, and so now it's time that we tackle Max Payne 3. Released in 2012, roughly one year before GTA 5, this thing was developed by Rockstar Games, instead of Remini Entertainment, for the PS3, Xbox 360, and Microsoft Windows. The game released to mostly positive ratings, however despite that, it has become infamous as the most divisive game in the series, and after having finished it, I can see why. So why is that? Well, that's a good question. So as the old saying goes, if you don't try, you'll never know. So let's get our game on, and go play! Taking place 9 years after the last game, Max has since been booted out from the police and has now fled 5,000 miles to Sao Paulo, Brazil, in order to escape the wrath of a Mafia boss. Max now works private security for the rich and powerful Bronco family, alongside an old friend in Rao Passos. The Broncos are nothing more than a bland selection of overly rich stereotypes with one-dimensional personalities, which seems to be something of a staple in many of Rockstar's games. Aside from Max, the only other likeable character is Passos, who is actually a pretty swell dude, and becomes something of a shoulder for Max to lean on. Max has now degraded himself into an old pill-popping drunk, but we don't have time to ponder that, because right at the start, the Broncos are attacked and the boss's wife is kidnapped. Max then goes on a mission to get her back, but his efforts constantly backfire. Despite this, his employers keep him on, for reasons best known to themselves. After a while, Max eventually decides that he's had enough of being a drunk, and in turning over a new leaf, he shaves his head and grows a beard. That doesn't suit you Max, that doesn't suit you at all. He eventually uncovers a conspiracy involving human trafficking, organ smuggling, and paramilitary forces, and he does what he can in order to achieve some form of greater good. In his own violent way, of course. The story is effective enough to keep you engaged, but there are far too many cutscenes. Like sometimes you can't even go one full minute before it cuts the show as something completely mundane. A cutscene in the middle of a long mission is fine, but two or three? Nah mate, that shit ain't gonna fly. There's also a lot more profanity throughout the story as well, which doesn't bother me, but since the previous games were mature themed for other reasons, it almost feels out of place. Almost. The game also tries to recreate the graphic novel panels by showing us these different transitions and text popping up on screen, but I just wish they'd chosen one or the other. Hell, they even used them more effectively during loading screens. Visually, the game looks pretty good, even 10 years later. It runs on Rockstar's Rage engine, which they would use for GTA 5 a year later, which is why these games look so similar. Hell, you could almost describe this thing as a GTA 5 prototype, but we'll discuss that later. Environments are far more detailed and varied now too, and you can even see the carnage you cause when you're in combat, along with those slow cinematic shots when you finish off an enemy returning from the first game, and they are absolutely glorious showing off a lot more detail in the gore. There's also a few flashbacks in New York, which pay homage to the snowstorm from the first game, and they look gorgeous. One thing though, that is a real pain in my ass, and that I can't stand, is these hazy and saturated filters, that keep popping up constantly on screen during the cinematics. Now look, I get it, it's supposed to emphasise Max's alcohol abuse, but it just hurts my eyes having to sit through these. We're not playing from a first person perspective, so there's no need for it. I wouldn't be as bothered by this, if it weren't for the fact that you can't skip the cinematics. This is fine for a first time playthrough, but severely limits replay value, especially considering how many of them there are now. Rockstar, if you wanted to make a movie, just make a movie. So the third person shooting returns once again, and this is where it really feels like a GTA 5 prototype. Max's movement feels a lot like the characters in GTA 5. This game even has a cover mechanic similar to the one in that game, and Max's bullet time mechanic was also given to Michael too. Coincidence? I think not! There's a minor delay when moving, and the same happens when you perform the shoot dodge. Now I know this is more realistically accurate, but that split second between pressing the button and Max actually leaping can mean the difference between life and death. The bullet dodge is more akin to how it was in the first game, which I'm all for. There's even a bunch of scripted sequences that use this mechanic, and they are really fun to blast through. When you land, Max will continue to lay on the ground until you make him get back up, and you can constantly fire when you land, thank god. 
Also, you can make Max land flat on high surfaces, which is a neat idea. If you bullet dodge into a wall, Max will fall to the ground like a bag of shit, which is also a neat inclusion, and actually encourages you to think before you dolphin dive. The game still uses fixed health, but there's even fewer painkillers available than before, making some of the sections a lot harder. Hell, I think I died more times in this game than the previous two combined. Oh yeah, the adaptive difficulty is back, and it's gonna kick your ass. Watch out for headshots, because they instantly KO you. A feature that is cool in concept is that when you take a lethal shot, you can activate bullet time in a last stand effort to kill the enemy responsible, and get right back into the action. However, there are a few downsides to this. First off, it requires that you have at least one painkiller to activate it, which is fine. The main issue though, is that you can't always see the enemy that you need to kill in order to get back up, and if you've got no ammo left, then this becomes absolutely useless, and you just have to sit there and watch Max die so slowly. You can perform a melee attack to disarm enemies that are close, but getting in close enough to perform these is basically suicide. Headshots are a must even more so than before, as enemies are really spongy too. Like you'd think a dozen bullets from an SMG would be enough to kill someone, but no, they're like mosquitoes more than anything else. The game now features a weapon wheel, another GTA 5 staple. But now you have a three weapon limit, a two handed primary weapon, and two sidearms. If you equip one of your sidearms, Max will hold the primary weapon in his offhand, and if you equip both sidearms, he'll throw it away since he has no way of holding onto it. I actually like this, as it encourages you to be more strategic in how you deal with enemies, and this is a neat little piece of realism. One thing that I cannot understand is the button layouts on the console version. For some reason, best known only to themselves, Rockstar thought it was a good idea to make the left trigger your fire button, and the right trigger your lock on button. That doesn't make sense. Practically no other game out there does this. Not even the previous two games, which are basically a decade older. None of the layouts in the options menu allow you to change this either. This really threw me off for the first couple of hours playing. The game tries to offer up some replay value with an arcade mode, and golden gun parts that you can find throughout the levels, but I just had no motivation to hunt for these. There's also a multiplayer mode, which might have been fun, but many users had trouble getting it running with the Rockstar Social Club. It's even more redundant now, because as of December 2021, Rockstar shut down the servers for the console versions. Thanks. The soundtrack for this thing was fine, but none of the tracks really stood out to me. This time, it was composed by a noise rock band named Help. It takes away from the dark and sombre tone of the last game, and mixes up the tones a lot more, and certainly suits the action sequences throughout the game. Weapon sound effects are decent, and the voice work is fine. James McCaffrey is once again the standout here with his role as Max, and I do have to admit that he puts far more range of emotion into his performance here than in the previous entries. My one complaint is that Max speaks with far too many cliches throughout the story, even by his standards. He also feels the need to comment on everything, even something as basic as the player picking up painkillers. He hardly ever shuts up, it's like he's become a depressed Duke Nukem. I'm sorry I hurt your feelings when I called you stupid. I really thought you already knew. At this point, finding something else to complain or praise would just be a waste of time. This game is both fun and frustrating. When it clicks, it clicks really well, but at other times it just makes me want to pull my hair out. Now I have to be honest, I knew back when I did the video for the first game that it was going to be my favourite. Since that game, I've enjoyed each entry a little bit less than the previous one. I don't think either Max Payne 2 or even 3 are bad games, but the character and simplicity of the first game shines through far more than the others. Overall, I don't think Max Payne 3 is unenjoyable, but it is very jarring when compared to its predecessors. The overuse of cutscenes and some of the gameplay choices just bring it down for me. I'll also say that the ending, while good enough, feels a little ham-fisted for everything that was building up to it. But regardless, if you're a fan of the series, then it is worth checking out. Just expect it to be a bit of a bumpy ride. And there you have it, we made it through the entire Max Payne trilogy, and boy was it a roller coaster of a ride. Thanks a bunch for watching, and I really hope you guys enjoyed. If there's any games old and new you want to see me check out, then feel free to let me know. Any and all suggestions are welcome. 
Anyway, until next time, thanks again for watching, and always remember to work hard and play harder. GG.